words of our mouth, the meditations of our heart, the stewardship of these hands be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by, checking up on us one more time, and uh, we are so thankful for the opportunity to do this. Um, this is our way of expressing ourselves about um, the love we have for God and the will to do what he has given us to do as far as Hype Central is concerned. Um, a lot of things I want to say, um, not near as long as the last time I was before you, but I'm going to express what I was given. I'm thinking now um, of how I want to proceed because in the back of my mind, first of all, I don't know about you, but there's such an expectancy on the inside. At the same time, I'm trying to calm myself down. There's such an expectancy on the inside. I said the last time I came before you that I saw myself in the dream writing on the tree, the best is yet to come. So it's something along those lines. Um, if I knew the time and date, I'd probably tell y'all. That's probably the reason why I don't know the time and date. <laughs> um, but anybody else out there, just, just have this feeling that something is coming down the pike on behalf of God's people, on behalf of the workers of light on behalf of those that have this hope on the inside. Something's coming, y'all, you know? And I'm not thinking negative. I'm really not. I'm not thinking negative, you know? Those that are expecting negative uh, maybe ought to make some changes. I, I don't know, but that's not my thought. I'm not thinking negative. I'm, I'm thinking the goodness of God the grace of God, the increase of God. One of the affirmations I have is, I am that I am wealthy beyond measure, bountiful in every area of life, including the hidden treasures of darkness and the riches to be found in secret places. And I hold fast to that. You know, nothing specific. I, I don't think I've ever asked God for anything specific along those lines. Uh, but what I will say, because I was thinking of this, as I was thinking about how I was going to come before you, um, yes, the video says uh, Benedictus Dominus, or for me, uh, blessed uh, be the Lord, my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. I was thinking while I was in the, in, in the living room how we can talk for you on behalf of the, of, of the li listeners I know that are listening, on behalf of those um, that communicate with the universe or source or whoever you subscribe to. But for me, there's nothing I can't talk to God about. I know it's improper English, but hear me what I say. Whatever formulation of words that you can place in your head that you can talk to a person about, flesh and blood, good, bad, indifferent, neutral, it doesn't matter. You can talk to God about it. How precious is that? Whatever ails you, whatever your concerns are, whatever you feel your lack is, or your appreciation of him or for what the universe has done for you, whoever you just, uh, subscribe to. But for me, it's awesome. Whatever's on my mind at any given time, I can communicate with God about it and leave it right there. Awesome. I feel like at this point that I'm about to enter the ring. And I can.
and see whoever that guy is that works on the boxer massaging that person's hands or messing around with his forearms and <laughs> grabbing the top of his shoulders and getting them ready for the next bout. And with that in mind, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to our God be the glory for the things he has done. And also, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul? Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul? O Lord, my God, will I trust? in thee let me not be ashamed let not my enemies triumph over us one more wonderful my God is so wonderful. He's my shepherd and he's my God. Whatever I need, the Lord will supply. Our God is so wonderful. The fight begins. I want to begin here. A number of years ago, I worked for a restaurant. This was in the 70s. It was my very first job. The restaurant was called Roseland Seafood and Steakhouse. You know, I had to press to get that job. Some would say, why in the world you want to work? <laughs> At that particular time, I was, I don't know, 16 or 17. No, I was 15. I was 15 in, in 76 or something along those lines. And when I went in to talk to Fred Holloway, I said, uh, can I work here? I want to work here. And he says, he asked me how old I was. I told him. He said, you're going to have to get permission from your mom to work. I might have said something about this in a prior video, but I'm leading toward a point. So I finally got permission from my mom. I think it was a few days before my 16th birthday and they allowed me to work, and I was a busboy at this restaurant. And uh, one of the frequent guests that used to come by, we had, I think the Shaw Brothers used to come by, anybody that's, this is in Chicago, by the way. The Shaw Brothers used to come by, but also a now, uh, I believe deceased, if I be not, yes, for sure, deceased. Queen of Gospel singer used to stop by. Her name was Albertina Walker. And where I'm headed next is there was a young lady around the age of 19 
who asked Albertina Walker to allow her to sing with the caravans. And of course they accepted because if you do the research you find that Shirley Caesar did become a caravan member and Albertina Walker was considered her mentor. What I didn't realize is the last song I sang at the last <laughs> message, Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down, <laughs> was sung by Shirley Caesar after she had separated um, for a number of years with the caravans, if I be not mistaken. You guys can do the research. But that leads me to the beginning of today's message, the dance. I'm going to ask you, for those that are particular, now mind you, I'm still opening up, I'm still loosening up, I don't want to make any mistakes, I don't want to offend, just all of those things. Yes, all those things are flowing through my mind right now. But I'm loosening up, y'all. Y'all going to have to give me some time and understand. But listen, I'm asking for a little levity because one of the songs that I look at, I looked at, that's going to open up today's lesson, if you will, a message, was also sung by Sh Shirley Caesar in 1988, I believe. 1988 is when it um, came on the scene. And I'm not giving you the actual lyrics. I clarify, it's not my song but I broke it down as I saw it, and hopefully you'll understand as we get into this. Here we go. Here we go. Y'all with me? Y'all need to go get a drink. <laughs> go get your drink. The story revolves around an 86-year-old man. They called him Shouting John. <laughs> the name of the song is, I'll tell you at the end. <laughs> Shouting John. It says here he joined a dead church. This church didn't believe in shouting, didn't believe in dancing and didn't believe in speaking in tongues. But John joined this church and he came in dancing. Ha! I'm sorry, excuse me. Let me, let me. Oh. And everybody got disturbed. The deacon ran to sit him down. But John would jump back up. <laughs> the deacons, they tried to hold his legs. But then his hands would go up. Ha! Talk about me later, y'all. They would turn his hands loose <laughs> and then his feet would go. Like fire, shut up in the bone. They tried everything to stop old John from shouting. When they couldn't, when they couldn't stop him, they decided to go to John's house. I wrote down here, like I said, this isn't the lyrics verbatim. This is my take on what I saw in the lyrics. I wrote down to talk some reason to him. <laughs> and it says that the people said, along with the deacons, we just don't act that way here. We got dignitaries, you know, in our church. But they got to his house. They found John 
Mind you, according to the storyline, John is 86 year old. 86 year old man. He had a beat up old mule. And when they came to his house, John was plowing the field. This is after they arrived. And it says here something in the song along the lines, they arrived and they find cars. When was the last time you heard that word used? Fine cars. I think they call them whips now, rides, wheels. They got all, but back then it was a fine. You got That's a fine, that's a right fine automobile. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I digress. It just, it caught me when I saw that word fine. Yeah. <laughs> but they got over to John, it says, the deacon. And John wove that old mule. Whoa. And they said, you know why we're here. John said, because I praise God too much. They said, you praise the Lord too much. Hmm. Deacon said, if you don't stop shouting. I'm going to pause and kind of look around. Wow. Pause, look around. <laughs> If you don't stop dancing, we going to put you out of our church. Some in the group, because y'all know when there's drama, people tend to join in. So the deacons didn't come by themselves. Some others came with them, you know, the amen corner, you know, ones that's going to point their finger. And some in the group, just like I said, they amen the words that the deacons were saying. And they said, in addition to that, we're going to petition others, my words, to agree with this. That if you don't stop shouting and you don't stop dancing, we're going to put you out of the church. And that 86-year-old man named John said, put me out. <laughs> John said, I can't hold my peace. And he began to teach them. He said, did you see all that land when you drove up in your automobiles? John said, God gave me that. But you don't want me to dance. He said, look at my sons and daughters. God gave me all my children. Not one time did I have to go to the courthouse. When was the last time y'all heard it said that way? To the courthouse. <laughs> Not one time to the cemetery. You don't want me to dance in your church. I'm 86, still walking behind that old mule over there. I harvest my own crop and you don't want me to dance in your church. The name of the song is I got a chord here. Hold my mule. Ha! Let me just backtrack a little bit. The subject or the message today is the dance, the dance, the dance, the dance, the dance. One of the reasons why this song came to mind for me, first of all, there's legacy there. Let's look at the actual dates. Hmm. The song came out in 88. This is 2023. That would make John today approximately 120, 121 years old, something like that. You know, I mean, if, the, if it was based on a, a, a real character, he'd be 121. But, but I want you to have in your mind legacy, legacy, legacy. And despite what John knew about this organization, I'm going to call it, he knew they were different than he was. He knew that going in. And yet, and yet, it says here, John joined that organization. He knew what they didn't do and all of that. So first of all, 
we're dealing in legacy here. Let's say this happened a long time ago. There was something else I want to bring out. Shut up in his bones, church, disturbed, house. The beat up mule. Him out there plowing in the field. You know, if that was today, you know, you'd have probably, bear with me in my levity and folly, you would probably have uh, some people you hired out that came from Mexico <coughs> uh, taking care of your field. And you'd probably have a Toro or what's that other one? A John Deere and not a mule <laughs> taking care of the field. And um, you would probably have a Cadillac today, you know, fine car. You would probably have a SUV, Escalade, you know. I'm messing, y'all. I'm messing. I'm messing. And one of the things I also want to hone in on is I said a couple of times, our church, they church, they church, hmm, huh. they, they church, they, they, the assembling of ourselves to get the, I, I, I didn't know it was yours. A place for all to get. All right, we'll come back to that. So what I want you to keep in mind is legacy. And the reason he had to express himself. He knew where he was, but he also knew where he came from. You heard him declare, put me out. But he also told them, as a witness to them, hold my mule. I'll shout and dance right here. But let me move on a little bit further, because that's not where I want to dwell on. But the dance, the dance. Keep in mind the legacy, the dance, the dance. If it was in real life, it'd be 120 some odd years, and um, I want to say thank you and honor to, uh, she's actually a pastor, uh, Shirley Caesar, or the first lady of gospel, or the queen of gospel. So we thank her for that song and many more. Oh, and there's another, there's a couple of songs. Uh, um, Jesus, I love calling your name is something that she sang I like. But anyway, y'all look her up. There's a, a number of songs that I like from Shirley Caesar. But we're focusing on Hold My Mule and the legacy that it brings and why he was trying to convey to them the need to dance. To dance. My prologue, if you will, as I get into the message. All were not created to sit around the bonfire singing Kumbaya. For those that don't know, that is a prayerful plea to God to come by here. So I say again, all, meaning people, humankind, mankind, weren't created to sit around the bonfire singing Kumbaya. But some were meant to be your warrior. Let me move on a little bit further. Some among us, we hug trees in an effort or an attempt to stay grounded. There are others that come up as a determined force that those very trees, those great trees, tend to represent. Think about the great oak tree. Think about trees you know that have been around for a long time. Just looking at the bark alone for me, the thickness of the bark let me know that there's something substantial and then the depth of those roots. So I'm saying there are some that hug the trees and then there are some that stand as representatives as the tree. Moving on. Some sing lullabies of oral tradition, while others sonic, and I'm giving it to you as I got it, 
That's the word I heard. Sonic. The timely war cry to prepare for battle. Some are sent to console the masses while others gather by or from a call to order and once they gather in attention they take the time to motivate them to inspire them and to remind them of who and what and why they are and that not later but presently they're victorious and that historical archives of battles won will be the songs sung for generations to come hmm. let us now speak to our mountains to remove and be cast into the sea. Your faith and your trust will bring this forth along with expected manifestations. I'm moving on. So let me see if I can set the scene up a little bit more. I thought about a child. Again, the subject is the dance. I thought about once you tell a child about something, a good event that's going to happen, <laughs> how animated, I'll use that word instead of dancing around, how animated they become. Back in the day, and I, I'm saying this for a reason, back in the day, if we found out we were going to McDonald's, no harm, no foul, talk about me later, I, I say it back in the day, we would get a spring in our step. I was looking at my uh, grandson on the other day, and I think he asked me to... Uh, make some eggs or pancakes or something like that. Or either it was something. It was something unique that he asked for. And I gave him the, the go ahead or the okay that I would get it for him. And then all of a sudden, whatever he was watching that TV, he said, look at there. Look what they're doing right there. His whole, <laughs> his, <laughs> his whole character changed, got light. And, 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 and flighty, you know, in a, in a positive way. And he's like, oh, look at that. That is ridiculous. That is. <laughs> Y'all got me. You see where I'm going with this? So let me move a little bit further. The other things I wrote down, I got McDonald trip or being announced that they're going to Disney World or uh, here. Uh, no school today. You know, snow day or whatever. You know how kids get animated about that. Or. They get the okay to get ice cream. Again, the subject is the dance. Keep in mind, hold my mule has legacy. John was 86 year old. If we would calculate, he'd about, be about 120 something today. Someone that old has seen some things, experienced some things, realized some things. And you heard what. He, what John told them deacons and the amen corner. He said, hold my mule. So moving a little bit further. We just talked about the kids. So a couple of songs came to mind at that point. I, I wasn't as um, piecing together like I was on the last message. I just reversed what I put down at different times where I wrote, whether it was on a piece of paper, whether it was on phone. I just went with it, went it in reverse, and I looked over it. And um, I think I put the announcement, um, Benedictus Dominus, uh, probably now, we're about a week maybe, Renee? It's probably about a, at a week week ago. And I don't want to wait as long. Um, and just so y'all know, I mean, I'm, I'm not down to a science when I'm going to come before you. Um, when I ended uh, uh, our last message, I had nothing um, in queue uh, to come. And I guess it was within 48 hours I saw something beginning to happen. And you'll find out further what actually took place for me to have this subject here. Um, so how consistent we'll become, stay tuned. And then also during the week, and I'm just saying that for those that think I'm hiding out or something is going on, you know, I, no. Um, you know, we're taking care of business. We're working. 
um, um, overseeing the little ones during the week, just whatever, just like you, stuff going on. So um, when we find an opening, like today, today is Sunday, and it's approximately the afternoon, and we're, we're, we're recording it now. So, so just bear with us as we go forward and just hold us up in your thoughts, positive thoughts, um, because I feel like the best is yet to come. Something's coming. I believe that. So the next thing that came to mind were these songs. And some are going to say hogwash. Um, because first of all, <clears throat> ain't that a country song? The first song that came to mind was We Danced by Brad P Paisley. We Danced. And that's kind of uh, uh, love you know, affection, something along those lines. When you have the opportunity to look at it, I'm not going to go through the words, but we danced. The second song that came to mind, this is actually from my pay playlist because I was thumbing through my p playlist, and I guess I purposely wanted to see what in there would strike me along the lines of having to do with dance. The next song that came to mind was The Dance, and that was performed by Garth Brooks. And it starts off looking back. And, and the particular thing I want to point out about his song, The Dance, is you'll find out as you go through the lyrics of the words, you'll find out what if he wasn't even invited to the dance? Had I not been invited to the dance? Huh? Ha. Huh. So I'll leave that. And then the last song I wrote down for now is Let's Dance by David Bowie. Let's Dance. A lot of you know that. And then the next, immediately after that, and I'm saying this for a reason, because you won't know the answer to this until the end, the end of the message. And the words are snake dance, snake dance. And the first thing that comes to mind, yes, snake dance. So we're going to come back to that. So, sacred dance. No words, but conveyed by movement, by movement. There's various types, religious, traditional, cultural, having to do with maybe rite of passage. Um, someone's first, is it called cotillion? Someone's cotillion, or prom, or wedding, they can dance. Um, uh, general group gatherings or family reunion dance next thing I wrote down I've got that mandated square dance that mandated square dance my mind went back to high school George Washington Carver High School I don't know what the class was, if I would, I would say home economics, but it was something. It was one of those classes where there were mandated things that they, we had to cover in order for you to pass. Um, it was a indirect something to do with gym, but I can't recall the name of that class. But I want to say human resource. Not human resource, but uh, home economics. That's what I want to say, home economics. Something along those lines. And one of the things we had to cover was dance. And this was back in, you know, this was in the late 70s, in the late 70s, high school. And it was before fame. It was before, <laughs> it was before you know, those type of show, you know, uh, uh, I think it was because the school changed to a military academy after I left. Um, it changed to the School of the Arts for a time after I left. But it was certain things that was happening socially, I think, that kind of spearheaded the change of, of what they wanted the high school to become. But during that time, none of that was there. And the dance they taught us was square dance. <laughs> yeah. I want to I, I, I take it a little, you know, I, I want to go there, but I'm not. Square dance, of all things. And me, because of my personality and my personality traits, I'm good here, right, right here. I don't connect me with nobody. Don't you know? That's that's just the way I was then. Was that that empathy or that empathic type trait coming out? Because I didn't want to be bothered with too many people. I was kind of solo then. I felt uncomfortable at times. 
Yeah, I'm telling on myself. You know, if a teacher comes up and they, so, how are you? How's everything going? And I kind of give them a look, look, first of all, talk to me straight. What's all this? What's all that? Just talk. And, and, and maybe because they could see how withdrawn I was, they wanted to make sure everything was okay. But it was just something about how they came, when they did come, and it was like that. It, you know, maybe they were trying to protect themselves, but it, it always kind of just a little bit wrong. I just, don't bother me. Where is the dismissal bell? That's <laughs> I'm, I'm just being honest. And I couldn't wait for graduation date. I just wanted out. And here they are saying that if you don't participate in square dance, you can't pass. And here we go. The square dance. Country again. Now let me clarify something. I mean, this is my time, and y'all can turn, stop the tape, walk away. I listen to country music. And there's certain songs I love. If I, get, if I went to Amazon Music, you'll see my playlist. So it started with uh, actually, uh, Renee, like when we moved here and we were listening to more gospel or church music that particular time, mm -hmm. and the, it was a bit conservative. You know, it, you know, it wouldn't loosen us up. And, and then the, the, the stations that were, they weren't that clear. So that's when I started listening to uh, country music. And then those that have listened to prior videos, I used to drive trucks over the road, and those were some of the clearest stations. <laughs> Uh, on the road as well as uh, uh, talk stations were very clear no matter where you were. And, of course, this was before, um, I don't think, if it was in existence, satellite. Because now, whatever I'm listening to when I leave here, I can listen to when I get to California. I'm being funny. So you can listen to the same thing now. But back then, it wasn't that way. Mm -hmm. So I genuinely listen to country music. But I'm just making a point. Square dancing? So let me move on. Dancing, dancing. I recall looking while I was on YouTube over a number of months ago, some more recent than others, different ones, um, the art of expression on display. Um, I have a couple of names down. I don't know if it would be proper to see, but you know who you are. They did a couple of dancing on YouTube um, in uh, Tarot Land. You know who you are. Um, I will say, uh, no, I won't even call any names, but I'll say that the transmutation of negative energy indeed. I'll just say that, and I'll stop right there. Y'all got me. So, moving on a little bit further. Why dancing? What's the issue with dancing and you, Charles? What's the issue with dancing with you? Back in the day, when I finally uh, separated from my brother, he had a room, you know, we were in the room together, and I took it upon myself to create a bedroom in the basement. One of the things that I acquired was a big, gigantic, floor model, black and white TV. I picked it up from someone, some guy named Tiny, but he was built like Hercules, carried that, that TV himself on his shoulder, and he brought it down to the basement for me. And I used to watch a lot of black and white movies. That's why I am still fond of them today. And there were a few people that kind of caught my eye. The first name I have down is Ginger Rogers. Ginger Rogers. And of course, I'll say, but of course, Fred Astaire. <laughs> and somewhere along the way, I ran into, of course, Sammy Davis Jr., Gregory Hines. There was Gene Kelly, of course. I shouldn't say, of course, but Gene Kelly. And then I've got uh, Mikhail, uh, yeah, Mikhail Berezhnikov, correct. Yeah, I remember him from that movie, The White Knights. <laughs> and also, one thing I used to do, uh, Renee, at, at work is uh, when I had some downtime is I would be flipping through Google Images, and i come across certain faces, and, and if a certain face and it was usually female, I'll just be honest. If a certain face stood out that I found, because I used to take pictures and stuff as, a long time ago as well. So if certain pictures stand out to me, I would take it, and then I would create, what is that called, uh, like a screensaver, 
a screensaver, and one of the faces I came across during that period of time was Misty Copeland. When I came across her face, I you know checked her out and realized she was a dancer and so on. So y'all do the research. <clears throat> and then, but of course, dance we're talking about, the dance, Michael Jackson. There was a period of time where <clears throat> when you got the news, they would sneak, they say, hey, there's a Mike, uh, there's a uh, Michael Jackson video, you know, cause they, cause they, <laughs> check it out. It's, it's going to be on this evening. So you, you know, wait for, cause it was something about uh, his display that, that his expression of the art of dance. It was something about that, you know? Mm-hmm. So Michael Jackson, I have down as well. Then also again, the dance, I'm gonna get there. Y'all I'm gonna get there for movies. I wrote down. Dirty Dancing, one. I've got Footloose, another. I've got Soul Food, another. I've got Stump the Yard, another. I got Risky Business. I think he was doing the air guitar in Risky, Risky Business. But I'm thinking, and, and, and I know you guys right now, since I bought up movies with dance, you can see him. I, I, I see uh, uh, Sidney Poitier in, in uh, what was that, that uh, movie? To Serve with Love, Dancing Around. I see uh, Al Pacino. It was a lot of movies that Al Pacino danced in. I mean, just just ridiculous, a lot of them. But anyway, movies. <clears throat> Soul food. You, I, I, I'll, I'll get you. Remember Faith? I'll come back to that. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> Can I do this, please? All right, anyway. And now a couple of songs that came to mind, too. Y'all remember this? Uh, Gundam style. Y'all remember that? Gundam style. <laughs> you know, anyway, and then you got uh, the Macarena, Macarena, y'all remember that, Macarena? And then, of course, I've got several of uh, Michael Jackson's uh, videos, you know, Billy Jean, B, Thriller, just, just so many of them. And there were more, I know, I know, you know, uh, Madonna would prance around, different ones, and I can, more recent, you know, I can see uh, Chris Rock, uh, not Chris Rock, Chris Brown, and, and others, you know, dancing. I, I know there's more, but this is what came to mind when I wrote these down. But I also put down for songs, um, Michael Jackson videos, uh, movie premiere, waiting to be experienced. That's what I was talking about, waiting for his, his video to come out. Mm-hmm. And then as an honorable mention, <clears throat> I put down Kurt Franklin. And, you know, maybe I could talk that a little bit later because the one song came to mind was Stomp. Uh, I don't know if that was the actual name of the song, but Stomp. And then I go on to say this. Again, the subject is the dance. Um, I, I named the video uh, Benedictus Dominus for a reason. You know, as we're going into whatever era we're going all the time, it's probably not prudent to give all right up front. Y'all got me? All right. So, enough said. Enough said, N-U-F-F. I got these words. This artful expression, the dance, artful expression, is becoming more and more exploited due to competitive programs or events or the way dance has been paired in some films or movie, movie production. The traditional, the cultural, and the sacred values become lost or clouded and even at times distasteful. Somebody saying, uh oh, uh oh, here he come, here he come. Y'all, y'all, last week, Bolo, be on the lookout for. Um, All Points Bulletin. Yes, yes. If it feel like I'm going there, stay tuned. Just hang around. Here we go. So, there are certain films. Let me, let me replay what I just said. There are some films or movies where dance is becoming more and more exploited or or, or uh, I've got exploited due to for example and and because it's not just movies but also shows you got shows programs exploiting dance exploiting and I, I'm gonna get to why that's important <clears throat> in a little bit and the dances I speak of, traditional, cultural, sacred, and the values of dance are becoming more clouded and even distasteful at times. But don't lose heart. All of them aren't losing their value. 
Let me tell you what I mean. Y'all remember this uh, movie called uh, Dirty Dancing? Dirty Dancing. Talking about the value of dance. And I wrote down, the value of dance not lost as we watch Baby. Y'all remember Baby? That was her name. They called her Baby you know, for short. I don't know what her real name is at this point. Um, and it says, as she began to learn posture and cadence and the delivery of certain moves while in that movie. So this is said because I want to let you know that all movies aren't looking to, to, to muddy the waters with what d dance brings to the world. This kind of displays a lighter side, an interesting side. And it was so fresh and believable. There were certain scenes that were believable about it. She, uh, envision with me, she was doing something on the stairs, and she had to stop herself and laugh at herself. Y'all remember that? Anyway, look it up. Pretty good movie. That's one. Here's another one. Also, the appreciation of watching the female character played by Julia Stiles as she often struggled to learn hip-hop. <laughs> Y'all remember that? While transitioning from a life of ballet. Huh? Yeah, I, can I do this, please? Yes, y'all. Save the last dance is the movie, yes. So, after having leading, <laughs> uh, been even a part of Juilliard as well. So, again, uh, certain scenes believable. Y'all saw when he had his hands on his knees and she was sitting inside and they going, doing like this and he, they like this. <laughs> and then the other scenes in that movie. So, anyway, so there is some value in some movies to make you appreciate the art of dance is where I'm going. So the next thing I wrote down, I have off to the side something about Al Pacino. Al Pacino was in Scarface. He was in Serpico. He was in Godfather. Godfather uh, 3 and I think another Godfather. He was in uh, Devil's Advocate, I think it was, and Carlito's Way. I think in all those movies he was doing some for the dance, some for the dance, something to do with dance. So anyway, I have next. Um... I also wrote down in parentheses, but I didn't, I didn't uh, fatten it up at all, was uh, Saturday Night Fever. That's another one, but we'll talk about that one later. Dance, an integral part of life for, cultural, for culture universally or around the world. Think about it. Think where um, scenes that you saw having to do with dance. But I also want to include sports, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. For traditional culture and sacred institutions, coronations were had, celebrations were had, um, graduations were had, rite of passages were celebrated, communication was done with dance, even with deities, to show gratitude or to make petitions for help and or support, or dance uh, often had to do with uh, um, um, going after peace and prosperity. And even, I have, and you can't leave this out, to prepare for war or battle. Dances are performed where? They're, they're performed on stage. They're performed out in the field. Um, they're performed on parade decks, um, at stadiums, on platforms, during competitions. And even around rinks, I wrote around, for skating or hockey, hockey and I also included boxing, and I'll explain why in a bit. The dance is the subject. The dance, the dance, the dance. The dance can be performed.